Hello my dear students. Today we are going to continue with the chapter that we have started earlier and that is rat trap. Let us quickly recapitulate what we have learnt. We have learnt that there is a peddler who was a rat trap seller and uh, he had stolen 30 kroner money from the crofter. The crofter, the host who had given him shelter, food and everything that he required. For that day he was very comfortable but he betrayed the very man and he started moving towards the forest in order to save himself from police and public. But there he understood that this was the wrong decision that he had taken. Now he was trapped by the bait of 30 kroner rupees. But fortunately he heard some noise and he started moving towards the furnace. Students, now we will move further in the story. It was probably on account of all this noise that the blacksmith did not notice that a man had opened the gate and entered the forge until he stood close to the furnace. Surely it was nothing unusual for poor vagabonds without any better shelter for the night to be attracted to the forge by the glow of light which escaped through the sooty pains and to come in to warm themselves in front of the fire. Students, vagabonds, tramps, they don't have their permanent home. Therefore, whenever, wherever they find shelter which is conducive for that very day, they stay out there. Here also the same thing has happened. Somehow, vagabond got a place to reside. Therefore, he asked for the permission and stayed there. Let's move ahead, students. The blacksmiths glanced only casually and indifferently at the intruder. He looked the way people of his type usually did, with a long beard, dirty, ragged and with a bunch of rat traps dangling on his chest. Students, vagabonds are like such. They don't have cleanliness. They wear the... the uh, clothes that they have repeatedly okay there is no place to clean their clothes because maybe they have the only one that they are wearing and there is no means to clear their beard and all therefore they look so shabby and that was the look of this rat trap seller as well he asked permission to stay and the master blacksmith nodded a haughty consent without honoring him with a single word students when the tramp asked for the permission, then there was no problem in allowing. So, Master Blacksmith, he allowed him, but did not honor him by replying through a word. Let's move ahead, students. The tramp did not say anything either. He had not come there to talk, but only to warm himself and sleep. In those days, the Ramso Iron Mill was owned by a very prominent iron master whose greatest ambition was to ship out good iron to the market. He watched both night and day to see that the work was done as well as possible. And at this very moment, he came into the forge on one of his 90 rounds of inspection. Students, the vagabond got the permission and he stayed there. Only thing he required was warmth and that is what he got here. Apart from that, he did not long for respect or anything else because he knew that he is not going to get any respect from anyone because that is how the people used to treat him. The iron mill, that is Ramzo, Ramzo iron mill was owned by a very prominent iron master who was very meticulous to his work. Now every day and night he used to come and do the inspection about the material that was being made and uh, how the work is being carried out in the workshop. So he had come for the nightly rounds and let us see what happens. Naturally the first thing he saw was the tall ragamuffin who had eased his way so close to the furnace that a steam rose from his wet rags. The iron master did not follow the example of the blacksmiths who had hardly 
deigned to look at the stranger. He walked close up to him, looked him over very carefully, then tore off his slouch hat to get a better view of his face. Students, here we find the workers were least bothered about the vagabond, but when the iron master came in the workshop, he went closer to this ragamuffin. All right, but he wanted to take a closer look of him, who had gone a bit closer to the furnace to get him warm. But of course, it is you, Nils Olof, he said. How you do look. The man with the rat traps had never before seen the iron master at Ramzo and did not even know what is his name was. But it occurred to him that if the fine gentleman thought he was an old acquaintance, he might perhaps throw him a couple of kroner. Therefore, he did not want to undeceive him all at once. Students, here the iron master thought that the vagabond was his old acquaintance. He thought that he is Nils Olof. But Ragamuffin also did not try to disclose his own identity. It is because he thought that if he has mistaken him for his friend, then of course he will throw some money to him. He was waiting for money, but something else happened. Yes, God knows things have gone downhill with me, he said. Students, here the tramp, the peddler says that yes, the situation has not been good in my life, therefore I am in this condition. See, only thing that was going in the mind of peddler was just to receive money from the iron master. You should not have resigned from the regiment, said the iron master. That was the mistake, if only I had still been in the service at the time. It never would have happened. Well, now, of course, you will come home with me. Students, here the iron master has mistaken this vagabond for his friend Nils Olof. And he says that he should come to his house because iron master wanted to do something for his betterment. Let us see whether the vagabond agrees or not. To go along up to the manor house and be received by the owner like an old regimental comrade. That, however, did not please the tramp. Students, the vagabond was not happy when the iron master called him to his house. It is because he knew that, he first of all, he knew that he was not his friend. He was just waiting for some money, which did not happen. Next, he had stolen money from the crofter. So, because of these two reasons, he did not want to go. Let's move ahead, students. No, I couldn't think of it, he said, looking quite alarmed. He thought of the 30 kroner to go up to the manor house would be like throwing himself voluntarily into the lion's den. He only wanted a chance to sleep here in the forge and then sneak away as inconspicuously as possible. The iron master assumed that he felt embarrassed because of his miserable clothing. Students, when the story started, we saw Pedlo was a beggar and he was in search of money. He used to sell rat traps in order to get money. He ran away for money. He wanted comfort for one day therefore he stayed in Ka crofter's house okay but here everything is being provided by the iron master but still he is not ready it is because of two reasons first his identity is different he is not nils olof okay and another reason is he has stolen money of the crofter please don't think that i have such a fine house that you cannot show yourself there, he said. Elizabeth is dead. As you may already have heard, my boys are abroad and there is no one at home except my oldest daughter and myself. We were just saying that it was too bad we didn't have 
any company for Christmas. Now, come along with me and help us make the Christmas food disappear a little faster. Students, one thing we must notice out here and that is almost all the characters in the story are suffering from loneliness. Peddler is lonely, he does not have family. Crofter is alone and the Iron Master and his daughter, both of them are alone as well. So loneliness is also another theme of the story. Here Iron Master wants to persuade him to come to his house but he did not agree. Let's see what happens further. But the stranger said no and no and no and the Iron Master saw that he must give in. It looks as though Captain Von Stahl preferred to stay with you tonight, Stinstrom, he said to the master blacksmith and turned on his heel. Students, the word Stinstrom is the surname of a person and here this is the surname of blacksmith. But he laughed to himself as he went away and the blacksmith who knew him understood very well that he had not said his last word. Students, it means that at last the Iron Master had said that he must give in, but he has not given in yet. His plans are ready and let us see what he does now. It was not more than half an hour before they heard the sound of carriage wheels outside the forge and a new guest came in, but this time it was not the Iron Master. He had sent his daughter apparently hoping that she would have better powers of persuasion than he himself. Students, he had not given in. The Iron Master had sent his daughter to convince Vagabond to come in the manor's house. He believed that his daughter had great power of persuasion. Let's move ahead. She entered followed by a valet carrying on his arm a big fur coat. She was not at all pretty but seemed modest and quite shy. In the forge, everything was just as it had been earlier in the evening. The master ironsmith and his apprentice still sat on their bench and iron and coal still glowed in the furnace. This stranger had stretched himself out on the floor and lay with a piece of big iron under his head and his hat pulled down over his eyes. As soon as the young girl caught sight of him, she went up and lifted his hat. The man was evidently used to sleep with one eye open. He jumped up abruptly and seemed to be quite frightened. Students. The Iron Master thought that the dress was so shabby of the vagabond, maybe that was stopping him to come to his house. Therefore, he had sent dress for vagabond through the daughter and her persuasion will surely get the vagabond to the house. Thinking this, he had sent the daughter. But vagabond became a bit scared because... He had done something wrong. Now and then he is so frightened. It is because of the thiefery that he has done. My name is Edla Willingmanson, said the girl. My father came home and said that you wanted to sleep here in the forge tonight. And then I asked permission to come and bring you home to us. I am so sorry, Captain, that you are having such a hard time. Students, Edla, the daughter of the Iron Master, tries to convince the peddler to go to her home. Let us see how she convinces him. She looked at him compassionately with her heavy eyes and then she noticed that the man was afraid. Either he has stolen something or else he has escaped from jail. She thought and added quickly, you may be sure, Captain, that you will be allowed to leave us just as freely as you came. Only 
Please stay with us over Christmas Eve. Students, Edla was much more observant than her father. She observed that the man must have stolen something. He might be a thief. That is why he is a move and every arrival of the person. So, she also thinks that he might not be captain because he is so scared now and then. And captain, uh, they have specific personality. They have, they are brave. Which bravery we don't see in the peddlers. Maybe Edla also observed this and then she came to a conclusion that he can never be a regimental comrade. Edla speaks so softly. She looks at him so compassionately and she assures him that he is going to be as free as he is right now. This was the assurance which made peddler think about the decision. She said this in such a friendly manner that the rat trap peddler must have felt confidence in her. It would never have occurred to me that you would bother with me yourself, miss, he said. I will come at once. He accepted the fur coat which the valet handed him with a deep bow, threw it over his rags and followed the young lady out to the carriage without granting the astonished blacksmith so much as a glance. But while he was riding up to the manor house, he had evil forbiddings. Why the devil did I take the fellow's money? He thought, now I am sitting in the trap and will never get out of it. The peddler accepted the invitation of Edla. And what made him accept it, he does not know. Maybe because the lady was so soft and she was so compassionate towards him and her words assured that he is going to be free after the Christmas Eve and uh, he was regretting, the peddler was regretting now that why he had stolen money. He knew that he is trapped now, that money is going to uh, create trouble to him. He had forbiddings as well. The next day was Christmas Eve and when the Iron Master came into the dining room for breakfast, he probably thought with satisfaction of his old regimental comrade whom he had run across so unexpectedly. First of all, we must see to it that he gets a little flesh on his bones, he said to his daughter who was busy at the table and then we must see that he gets something else to do than to run around the country selling rat traps. Students, the Iron Master was waiting for his regimental comrade and he was making plan to better the life of his friend. He was ready with his plan that initially he is going to provide him with the basic necessities and later on he will think about uh, some kind of profession some kind of job for him and this he was doing just because he thought that this man was his friend remember he is not doing a social service he thinks that he is a known person therefore he is showering his uh, help but Edla is all quiet because this girl is so keen observant and she has observed that this man can never be a regimental comrade students let's move further to see what happens when his true identity will be revealed it is queer that things have gone downhill with him as badly as that said the daughter last night I did not think there was anything about him to show that he had once been an educated man. You must have patience, my little girl, said the father. As soon as he gets clean and dressed up, you will see, you will see something different. Last night, he was naturally embarrassed. The tramp manners will fall away from, his, from him with the tramp clothes. Students, the daughter could not see anything that was related to an educated man in the tram. Therefore, she questions that he does not have any uh, quality of such man. But father says that no, he was embarrassed last day because of his 
dress so today he might be he, today he is going to be showing his true identity let's see what happens just as he said this the door opened and the stranger entered yes now he was truly clean and well dressed the valet had bathed him cut his hair and shaved him however he was dressed in a good looking suit of clothes which belonged to the iron master he wore a white shirt and a starch collar and whole shoes but although his guest was now so well groomed the iron master did not seem pleased he looked at him with puckered brow and it was easy to understand that when he had seen the strange fellow in the uncertain reflection from the furnace he might have made a mistake but that now when he stood there in broad daylight it was impossible to mistake him for an old acquaintance students here we get to see that iron master had mistaken him for his friend but now it was broad daylight and it was clear that he was not so then iron master reacted so violently he started scolding the peddler let us see what happens what does this mean he thundered the stranger made no attempt to dissimulate he saw at once that the splendor had come to an end it is not my fault sir he said i never pretended to be anything but a poor trader and i pleaded and begged to be allowed to stay in the forge but no harm has been done at worst i can put on my rags again and go away well said the iron master hesitating a little it was not quite honest either you must admit that and i should not be surprised in the sheriff if the sheriff would like to have something to say in this matter students here the iron master loses his temper he becomes so violent and starts scolding the peddler but readers must remember that it was his mistake he had mistaken the peddler for his friend okay so it was his mistake to convince uh, send edla and get him to the house he continuously he persistently said that he is not ready to go but it was iron master's persistence that he was there in their home student the peddler's reaction is so calm and composed he says that it was not he who was pretending it was iron master who had thought that he is his friend so still there is nothing which has gone wrong now also he can get back to his previous identity and go back but iron master had become so much angry that he says that no i must call polish in order to deal with this matter the tramp took a step forward and struck the table with his fist now i am going to tell you mr iron master how things are he said this whole world is nothing but a big rat trap all the good things that are offered to you are nothing but cheese rinds and bits of pork set out to drag a poor fellow students here the peddler becomes so irritated and he strikes the table and says that this entire world is a rat trap because when he had stolen 30 krona after that he was in trouble that 30 krona attracted him and he was in trouble now these wonderful things that was happening with him right now he considers these as bait and now he is trapped he wants to tell it to the iron master but let us see what was the reaction of this man set out to drag poor fellow into trouble and if the sheriff comes now and locks me up for this then you mr iron master must remember that a day may come when you yourself may want to get a big piece of pork and then and then you will get caught in the trap the iron master began to laugh that was not so badly said my good fellow perhaps we should let the sheriff alone on christmas eve but now get out of here as fast as you can students 
the iron master thinks that the rat trap seller had deceived the identity he is a person who hid his real identity and fooled iron master and now he is preaching to him so he did not like this and he says that he laughs at the preaching of the peddler the iron master had forgotten that for this person he was making plans to better his life he wanted him to eat sleep and do better in his life very quickly he had forgotten so it shows that he was self centered person if somebody is related to him then only he is going to help not to the people who are poor he is not ready for doing social service but just as the man was opening the door the daughter said i think he ought to stay with us today i don't want him to go and with that she went and closed the door what in the world are you doing said the father the daughter stood there quite embarrassed and hardly knew what to answer that morning she had felt so happy when she thought how home like and christmasy she was going to make things for the poor hungry wretch she could not get away from the idea all at once and that was why she had interceded for the vagabond students we know that edla can convince anyone she has power of persuasion so here also she was able to make her father ready by telling that this is what we, they had promised to the peddler that they will give a wonderful time on christmas eve saying that she pleaded to keep this man at least for that very day let's move ahead students i'm thinking of this stranger here said the young girl he walks and walks the whole year long and there is probably not a single place in the whole world whole country where he is welcome and can feel at home when wherever he turns he is chased away always he is afraid of being arrested and cross examined i should like to have him enjoy a day of peace with us here just one in the whole year students it was edla who could understand the peddler properly peddler did not say anything to edla but still he she was able to understand she was able to empathize with this man because she was keen observant and more matured than her father the iron master mumbled something in his beard he could not bring himself to oppose her it was all a mistake of course she continued but anyway i don't think we ought to chase away a human being whom we have asked to come here and to whom we have promised christmas cheer you do preach worse than a parson said the iron master i only hope you won't have to regret this the young girl took the strange by the hand and led him up to the table now sit down and eat she said for she could see that her father had given in the man with the rat traps said not a word he only sat down and helped himself to the food students here edla was able to convince i have already told and with that even the rat trap got the confidence and started eating the food that was laid in front of him time after time he looked at the young girl who had interceded for him why had she done it what could the crazy idea be students the peddler was wondering why a stranger was doing so much for him and we know the answer that edla was a humanitarian by heart she did for a human being and not for friend or any relative she was pained to see the condition of peddler therefore she had helped and there was no interest of a uh, self interest of edla at all after that christmas eve at ramzo passed just as it always had the stranger did not cause any trouble because he did not think but sleep the whole forenoon he lay on the sofa in one of the guest rooms and slept at one stretch at noon they woke up woke him up so that he could have his share of the good christmas fare but after that he slept again it seemed as though for many years he had not been able to sleep as quietly and safely as here at ramzo 
students it was true that the peddler had not taken a nice sound sleep for many years and here he slept for two reasons one of course he wanted to sleep he wanted to rest and another reason was that he was thinking over and over about the situation that why a stranger helped him in the evening when the christmas tree was lighted they woke him up again and he stood for a while in the drawing room blinking as though the candle light hurt him but after that he disappeared again two hours later he was aroused once more then he then had to go down into the dining room and eat the christmas fish and porridge students as it was promised by edla he was given the feast in this eve as soon as they got up from the table he went around to each one present and said thank you and good night students here we find change in the peddler do you remember when he was in the workshop there he did not wish a blacksmith when he was coming towards menor's house so here he is thanking each and every one and saying good night it is a good sign which had occurred because of edla but when he came to the young girl she gave him to understand that it was her father's intention that the suit which he wore was to be a christmas present he did not have to return it and if he wanted to spend next christmas eve in a place where he could rest in peace and be sure that no evil would befall him he would be welcomed back again the man with the rat traps did not answer anything in this he only stared at the young girl in boundless amazement students when the party was over edla says that the suit is gift for him and not only that she said that if next year the peddler wants to come here then nothing bad is going to happen it means that edla is not thinking that the peddler is culprit at any from any angle it is because of the circumstances that he had become so people hated him people scolded him people cursed him that is why this uh, hatred had filled the heart of the peddler the peddler was so much amazed to see how matured this little girl was the next morning the iron master and his daughter got up in good season to go to the early christ service their guest was still asleep and they did not disturb him when at about 10 o'clock they drove back from the church the young girl sat and hung her head even more dejectedly than usual at church she had learned that one of the old crofters of the iron works had been robbed by a man who went around selling rat traps students here edla become so sad because he it was revealed that the peddler was a thief and he had robbed the crofter yes that was a fine fellow you let into the house said her father i only wonder how many silver spoons are left in the cupboards by this time the wagon had hardly stopped at the front steps when the iron master asked the valet whether the stranger was still there he added that he had heard at church that the man was a thief the valet answered that the fellow had gone and that he had not taken anything with him at all on the contrary he had left behind a little package which miss willingmanson was to be kind enough to accept as a christmas present the young girl opened the package which was so badly done done up that the content came into view at once she gave a little cry of joy she found a small rat trap and in it lay three wrinkled 10 krona notes but that was not all in the rat trap lay also a letter written in large jagged characters students edla was extremely happy to see the gift left by the peddler as he had respected the faith shown in him by her rather than walking off with their silverware 
His gesture proved that the goodness in his heart had been awakened and he behaved like a real dignified captain. Honored and noble miss, since you have been so nice to me all day long as if I was a captain, I want to be nice to you in return as if I was a real captain for I do not want you to be embarrassed at this Christmas season by a thief but you can give back the money to the old man on the roadside who has the money pouch hanging on the window frame as a bait for poor wanderers. The rat trap is a Christmas present from a rat who would have been caught in this world's rat trap if he had not been raised to captain because in that way he got power to clear himself. Written with friendship and high regard, Captain Von Stahl. Students, the peddler had been living an unpleasant life of poverty, despair and frustration. His only aim in life was to keep his body and soul together by hook or by crook. Even through beggary and theft, the society had an apathetic and an indifferent attitude towards him. Thus, he too, having a defiant attitude towards society, flouted its norms. He never came across any angelic soul to understand, sympathize, love and guide him. Later, neither the crofter's hospitality nor the iron master's invitation to the manor house made any impact on him. In fact, he repaid the crofter by stealing his earnings and the iron master by giving him a piece of his mind when the latter talked to him taking the matter to the sheriff. However, Edla's warmth, understanding and genuineness touched him. Even the girl treated him like a captain. He spontaneously behaved like a real one. He left a rat trap as a Christmas gift for Edla and enclosed a letter of thanks and confessed in it, leaving behind the stolen money to be restored to the owner. He redeemed himself from his dishonest ways and emerged an altogether transformed person. And this all happened because of this noble soul of Edla. Students, this is the end of the story. Let me know if it is clear to you and we will meet in the next video. Thank you so much.